Um, this is November the 11th, 2010. I'm here with James Allen Rose and his beautiful wife, Barbara, in their home on Harker's Island on a windy, rainy, dark day, keeping them from taking an official nap, like I would like to take. <laughs> and uh, thanks for having me in here again today. You know, uh, you're, you're welcome anytime, night or day. <laughs> let me make sure we got to we got, yeah. say something in there for me. Well, uh, yeah, it's picking up fine. Um, uh, you know, when we were performing in front of that school group, mm -hmm. one of the things, and, and of course, you, you know, I tried to tell Karen, you know, uh, you can't really do an oral history in front of a school group. You're, you're, what you're doing is a performance. That's right. And it's totally different. Yeah. But you did say some things that I think maybe you thought uh, would interest the young and so <laughs> interested me. <There> <laughs> So, so, so that worked out well. Yeah. But uh, one of the things, you know, that I was fascinated by was you said that you got lost one time on one of the Indian trails here on the island. Uh -huh. And I bought a map yeah. of Harker's Island, and I was wondering if you could maybe draw on this map where, where that was. Or about where I know it's uh, an approximation. Well, now there's a there's a straight path out back of Grandma's house here. You know. Well, just it, to, it will take you straight to the bay. You know. Let me see if I can get up. Look over your shoulder. Oh. If I can get up, I gotta get some momentum. <laughs> I got to put my glasses on. Oh yeah, it, me too. Me too. Because it looks like some sort of special recipe or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see now. I've got the. There's the ferry dot road right now. Yeah. So yeah. we're down. We're down here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to, you know, pinpoint yeah. it pretty well. And this is an old, kind of old map, too, so. Yeah, it, it was is. done in the 50s. Uh, I, I was looking for a large plant, you mm -hmm. know, here. Uh, you know, I can. Now, the willow pond in here. This is probably the new trail they've they've made here. Um, and this looks like maybe our our location mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. So I go out back. Now this is actually uh, doesn't now, this show is you. This, this is back sound over here. That's right. Okay. So yeah. yeah. But see, it would happen like uh, if if that's Grandma's house. Perhaps this this is three lots. See here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is a road. Yeah, that's the road. That's the main road. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, then there's two small lots, and we have one of those kind of mm -hmm. like right here. Mm -hmm. So, see, I would go out down this old path here mm -hmm. and go on out, and there were different ones branching off from that. Mm -hmm. Now, if and you get And they were going over, to the eastern? Is that what they... That's right, to the east. They didn't run the length of the island. They just... Oh, yeah, of, yeah, well, they were, you know, lengthwise, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But there were some that, that went straight back. <coughs> <coughs> The first one going where you turn off to go east, uh, there, uh, there are two meteorite craters. Go ahead and mark on it. I, I got that for you to mark on. So, so just draw uh, them circles uh, right there. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Uh, it would be like right here would be a meteorite crater. Now, that path comes right by the side of that. And it goes on down. You can go in here. Once in a while, there'd be a, a duck in there. A little bit of water set right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And then you go right on east until you come to, we call it Blackie's Pond. Blackie's Pond? Blackie's Pond there. Okay. This one, uh, I, I don't think it had any kind of name or mm -hmm. anything. That's the first one. But this one, you walk right out in it. And uh, this was a little bigger, but they're all meteorite craters. Hmm. 
and uh, sometime in the distant past we had a, a meteorite shower and that was still one back here that nobody knew anything about. So you got lost. And I discovered it. <laughs> and I got lost going to this because this trail was winding like between and, the, between and, Blackie's and the the other one that people didn't know about was kind of winding. That's exactly right, yeah. and it's real thick uh, woods and everything. Mm -hmm. I got off of this trail and I got turned around because there were no tall trees that I could climb to get my get your bearings. Get my bearings. Right, right. And uh, right in here is where I got lost. But in getting lost, uh, I I. Step right out, right here. I step right out in the opening on uh, this new, new one, and it had tree tall pines growing completely around that, right there. Mm -hmm. So now Grandma's house, her chimney, top of her chimney, uh, stood up above the the woods as as, as it were. And so I took my time and climbed one of these pines, and I could see her chimney and and Miss Lola's chimney along here. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Oh, I think I got it now." But until I thought of that, I, I said, "There's no way to get out of here." <laughs> the bramble briars, uh, uh, they were that big around and formed on them, that big. About about two inches around and, 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 I, I and tore about an inch long. I tore wow. my shirt and got scratched. Uh, trying to get through them, but it opened right up a perfect round crater. Wow! And and the, the moss was in the bottom of it, and and a little bit of grass growing here and there around the edge of it. You know. And there was a pine that big around all the way around that, like. Somebody had taken their time and planted those trees, but I know they had grown there long, long after. Yeah, sure. Any activity, you know, major, major activity. Gosh, I wonder if they're still back there. No, uh, uh, no. I saw them uh, back now. Uh -huh. it's, it's, yeah, see, bulldozers have to completely changed the whole life, you know. Uh, my first cousin, uh, uh, Melba May, when she was a lot younger, she was dead going now, but she got out there, and I remember I was about 10 or 12 years old or something along in there, and the crowd had, was getting excited, and they hadn't come out yet, and it's getting almost night. So they got a bunch of flashlights and stuff, and everybody took out to go find her. And she was somewhere in that vicinity where I had gotten lost, and there's no way for her to get out of there but on the kind of those bars or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we got halfway over there, and, and different ones started hollering, you know, maybe we can hear her, maybe she'll answer. And finally, over oh, here, she did. And I said, well, they're going to have a time getting through here. This, this is terrible, and that was a, a, a real experience trying to, to get to her. I got part of the way, and I, I, I quit. The rest of them went on through, and here, here they came with her, you know. And um, well, she was a big girl alongside of me, you know. Mm -hmm. And but she had gotten out there, and no way that she could decide which way to go. Wow. And she she told us later said. I was about ready to retire for the night there because <laughs> I can't get out, you know. <laughs> and, and I wanted to ask you, were there deer on Parker's Island? Well, they would swim across, you know, try. once in a while somebody would But there's not down, a population you know. of deer on No, the no, it is never it? was because it, uh, after it became settled, you know, whatever, uh, and the houses started going up, it discouraged them, sure. you know, sure. and they take to another place. Now, over on Brown's Island, uh, they, there were several sighted over there because there was no activity going on. Right. And, um, and the Browns, they put a bunch of holes there, uh, on there, you know, and 
We had cattle there too. And cattle. Yeah. And they would come across the street and go there and feed on water or whatever, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. One of the members of the family always would, would go do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And they, they looked out for the livestock. Well, I wanted to ask you too about, um, I have read that they, they think or they know that the first menhaden plant in North Carolina was on Parker's Island. Have you ever heard tell of that? No, no, I haven't caught it, but uh, the old uh, Van Hayden boat and the Sickle, uh, that, that was a, a true happening there. The, tell uh, we, me about we, the Sickle. We had a storm, and she left out of the uh, Beaufort Cut from the factory. She broke loose, and she sailed stern to, you know, from Beaufort, uh, from Bova Cut, right on around Harker's Island, and landed up in the, they called it after that, the old Sickle Hole. Sickle Hole? And yeah. where's that on the map? Uh, it's down here. Uh, Mark it with a big X for me. Uh -huh. Right here. And is Sickle spelled with a S? S I C K L E. Okay. Like a sickle. Okay, know. okay. Um, and she, uh, it made it a little different then, but more flatty. But the tide was in the woods. See? Oh yeah, so it's was and, and she flat bottom. Uh huh. So she drifted right on in the woods there, and when the tide left, it left her in the woods. And they had to dig a a, a tunnel. I mean a, a ditch. Canal, yeah. Uh, for to get her out of that place. <laughs> and ever since that time, uh, it's been called a sickle hole. A sickle hole. Yeah. Uh, that would be like uh, in the early 40s. So that wasn't too... That's a right good while ago now. You know. So, uh... I'll, I'll look up the I, sickle. Evidently, I'll I, the I was sickle. probably 8 or 10 years old, maybe. Mm -hmm. Something like that, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll write there on it. And, and you know, um... There's a... Wonderful names on Core Banks for different place, <coughs> place names and everything. And mm -hmm. I was I was wondering, like on Shackerford, uh -huh. um, there's uh, names like Blinds Hammock Bay. Have you ever the bold, 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 they say bald headed bay. Bald headed bay. Uh huh. And uh, do you know why it's called bald headed bay? Evidently, the only thing I could ever figure uh, might be. A, one high hill there that reminded one of someone having a bald head. <laughs> right, right. Bald head bay. Now it's Banks Bay, the east, very east, the eastern one is Banks Bay. Well, we call, everybody calls it Banks Bay. And just through a, a ditch, a couple of ditches there, uh, it opens up in Bald, bald Hill, Bald Hill Bay. Bald Hill Bay, yeah. It's not yeah. Bald. Jack's Island, the yeah, shooting yeah. hammock. Yeah. Cow Island, Horse Point. Right. Hard working lumps. Well, we call it horse, horse marsh. <laughs> horse marsh. Yeah. What about that sand hill that you said was over there? Real high. Buzzard Hill. Well, Buzzard. that's Buzzard. that's to the east end. That's almost old board in the in the inlet. Buzzard Hill is that the one they look for the whales? That was the lookout hill for the whales, I bet. Well, any high place will give you a better view, you know. Mm -hmm. So they chose one of the hills. But yeah, you know, they come and go. Huh? Let, let those, the, those hills come and go, you know. But you that, know, but that, so changing. that was before 1933, before the storm opened up the drain there, right? No, well, now see, uh, it was uh, Representative Barton uh, that interceded to get the funds to, to cut the inlet right, right. in 1929. So uh, the inlet, it was almost, uh, it would almost make an inlet. Uh, it had a drain na across it. Naturally. Yeah. And uh, I heard them say when the tide was real low, you could walk across. Mm -hmm. And they would go down and visit uh, like out village. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. They even drove horse and wagon across there. But you had to be back before the tide got up because it, it was real loose then, you know. Right. Um, but that hill but, was called Eagle 
Uh, what was it called? Buzzard Eagle? The Buzzard Hill. Mm -hmm. And that, that's... Um, that when you were a little boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I went over there in a little article here, and I said, I'm going to climb that, or try it anyway. It was approximately 80 feet high. Wow. wow. It was the biggest hill. I stood on the dock to Atlantic. And I, I watched the lighthouse, was it just like a pencil, little pencil mark is taking like out a lighthouse from that land. Uh -huh. And to, just to the west end, west of that, was it looked pink. It was like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, uh, it had to be 80 feet or more. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> and this particular morning, I went on over there and I anchored the, the boat, you know waiting on the shore and started my trek. I was walking over all kinds of things, jumping across ditches and whatever. That was just the go as where the water had run off of them. Finally I got to what I called the base of it. And I looked about it like this. And I said, I don't know whether I get up there or not. Wow. Now it's soft sand. Mm -hmm. right? So I ran a little way, tried to run up it, you know, try to climb as high as I could. And I had to quit and try to get my breath. Wow. It's not easy going through soft sand, uh, almost vertical. Right. I did that. It took about seven or eight tries to get to the top of that, the butter hill. Wow. When I got there, I could look down the eastern beach, and I, I could see the whole of Shackleford Banks from there to the inlet, Buffer wow. Inlet, wow. from the top of the butter hill. Now the reason, one reason they call it Buzzard Hill, they, they have been buzzards on the top of it. They like high places where they can watch, you know, for dead carcass or whatever, you know. Yeah. But also the blue heron, they love to, to congregate there on top of that. And those <laughs> birds, they show up real good and it looks like people standing around on top of that hill. You can imagine yeah, that. Yeah. Now I watched the Butter Hill finish what it was going to do, be created, and I I watched it completely disappear to where it's like an open field now, no sign of the Butter Hill. Wow. That was a, a the biggest hill in North Carolina, Eastern wow. North Carolina. Wow. Was other than uh, Kitty Hawk. Mm -hmm. Kill Devil Hill. Hill. Yeah. Kitty Hole. It was between those two. Now you know that geographer uh, Collier Cobb, Cobb in the twenties uh -huh. documented over on Shackleford um, what he called whale heads of sand that would uh -huh. just blow in. Uh -huh. And he and he had pictures of some of the houses inundated with sand. Yeah. Uh, over on their side, and the sand piled up against them. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, it can so, do it. Oh, because, oh yeah. yeah. Because it takes, fast. it's a natural phenomenon that this hill will move over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad had a cushion pant in Cape Verde. It's still there, it's not. Is it? Is it really? It's can, can, you, can you show me where it is on this map? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now I can get up in this chair. <laughs> I wrote sickle there, uh, Johnny. That'll bring it back. To That'll memory. bring that back. Bring your memory back to right now. Uh, I just need to hold that. I'll, I'll hoist myself up once again. <laughs> well, he should let you have that chair. So now, it'll be easier to get up. Somebody, oh, somebody fine. called that Henry Jones Creek. This one, but this West Mouth Bay, and this is the East Mouth Bay. Well, that's a, that's, that says with Ma West Mount. That but, is, yeah, that's it. But, but this right in here should be the same. Should be considered all, all one, one thing, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's as far as I know about it. You know. Um, now sure. over here is, is uh, Molly Bell. There's an old lady in the uh, right here. I had on Browns Island. Old cabin right here. Yeah, and that about right here? that's called Molly Bell. That was her name. She lived by herself. How did Joanne Brooks have a trailer over there, her and Benjamin? They, they put one there, but, one there, but, but they, 
There were snake heads all over the place. And they, they gave it up. That's all it would take for me. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of snakes over the ground. But, uh, well, here, show, show me where uh, where your mom and dad's camp was. Oh, yeah, that's over in Cape Cape, Cape That would be in Cape uh, Yeah, Cape Oh, it's in the Cape. Well, yeah. let me have you got this Mm -hmm. I got the most maps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this is just the west side of the drain, the drain the inlet. You know, yeah. Right yeah. Here. Now this is the lighthouse up here, and that's Les and Sally's. Uh huh. And that's Casablanca, uh -huh. and that's the Coast Guard Station. Those are the landmarks you got uh, there. Okay. Now it's right. Let's see now, we we call this the head of the cove. Okay. Head of the cove. Cove, the old boat. Head of the cove. And uh, this would be Billy's Hill right here. Right, right, write that down for me. Put just right on it. Uh -huh. Billy's Hill. Is that Billy Hancock? Uh, Billy. Now don't let me put words in your mouth, but Billy Guthrie, I believe it is. Billy Guthrie? Right. I think it's Billy's right. Hill. Uh -huh. uh, Billy Hill. They had a camp there too. Yeah, they had one up towards the glade. Yeah, well, <laughs> that would be up in here. This is uh, marsh and sand, mm -hmm. made up of marsh and sand. And they call that the glade for some reason or other, but they said they, they would go up in there ever so often and shoot a couple of ducks or something, you know, like that, because it was tall grass. I mean, and water, you know, standing in here. So, right? so right in here, right in here, right in here, right in here. Uh huh. Yeah. That, that I'm one. gonna put the glade. The glade. Uh -huh. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. Uh, we were over on the, the west side of the of the cove, mm -hmm. and it, it looks a little bit different here because there is a definite shoreline there now. Mm -hmm. And it would be up one of these hills, I would say, about right there, aren't it? Okay. Wouldn't that be about right? Here's, right Casa here's Casablanca. Does that uh -huh. help you? Well, that that would be still west of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, after you head west. Is this point. a recent map? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's all different now than from what it was back then. Some of all it is. is Some of it is, yeah. But right here, in the, right in this area, is, Go ahead and darken it for me. Is where we had the camp. Okay. Uh, it's buried now. It's, it's buried. under the sand. Now, what was left? Just the pilings or no, the, no. Whole the whole camp? The whole camp. The whole thing camp was covered. Kind the whole of, camp. Uh -huh. So there's a there's like a sand a dune over it. It's a dune and it also all looks natural. The way we but saw the it the last time we were there, it's been a long time. Of that hill. Oh my gosh, that's and fantastic! The the yeah, the front beds, everything that they had in there. Yeah. Wow. We just I reckon they took old wood stove. They took there. what they wanted out of there and left their ass out. Well, there. he sold it to another guy. What was his name? Dallas. Sutton. Yeah, Dallas Sutton. Mm -hmm. Dallas Sutton. Yeah. S U T T O N. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Sutton. Mm -hmm. but, uh, wow! That, so that you think it's still right there? Yeah. Now, is this the same place that, as a boy, you played underneath it? Yeah. No, no. With the it's no. not. No, no. That's uh, down here in Cape Lookout Hill. This oh is way God. down the way it made then, so it would be like something like that there, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. This it stops here, you know. But it goes on out like this, mm -hmm. and right on up on the end. Close to the uh, where the gun emplacements were. No. 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 See, the gun emplacements uh, were down down in here in this area. Well, that they're out in the ocean here. They are now. Yeah. The way it made, you know. Yeah, and and this is a kind of a new map. So. Yeah. But, but Connie, can you imagine that they were up here? I know. Yeah. Yeah. And it, now they're out here. Yeah, it's moving. It, it just shows you how much it changes, you know. Yep. Because we had to go down in, a, in each end of the magazine. You just walk downhill, like, into that magazine, and on each side of the hallway, 
where where storage rooms where they stored the shells and whatever. You know. uh, and you keep going, you come out of the other end. And when I saw them, yeah. they were a tilt, and you could and, and the ocean was right there. That's right. In the yeah. 80s, that was the 80s. Now, now with a small boat, you can go between the gun mines and the beach. It's, it's uh, uh, unbelievable. almost unbelievable the way it can change. But that was like this. It's a long walk from the edge of the water, or it was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the gun emplacement. Mm -hmm. And now, the, that would be like here, and here the gun, or the gun emplacement would be here, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's cut away that much. And so your your camp where you're talking about uh, playing as a child underneath it would be? Would down on this end. Well, no need to write no more. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it'd be down here. And I'll bring another map next time. When I was <laughs> by my first trip to the Cape, they were fishing in the Cape. And my dad decided he'd take me over there. Now, I'm only five years old. <coughs> I remember kind of playing with that little boat under that old camp. The camp was built on a short pile, but I had plenty of room to walk out of there because. Uh, one night while we were there, uh, Uncle Edwin he stayed to the camp to clean up from from supper, and and he did the cooking and cleaning up, and they left him in the camp to do that. And that was his part of it. And his night. name was Edward. Edwin. Edwin Ed, Rose. Edwin Hanson Rose. Okay. Hanson, and his middle name comes from a a, a Mormon. Uh, a, a missionary. Mm -hmm. A missionary, yeah. one of the missionaries that my grandma uh, named him Edwin Hanson and in the road. But me and Uncle Edwin stayed in the camp. Was and, he the and, one that made the, the rolls and the lids of the. In the large sand lid, yes, sir. And he had a lid about like this all the way around it, where he put it on the, on the can, you know. And he would have had to make two of those for the crew, the crew of anywhere from twelve to, well, sometime in at eighteen. And they were fishing for. Uh, well, it'd be a mixture, you know, spots, croakers, mullets, uh, bottom fish mostly because they, you know, they would set the net off long before they were going to haul. <coughs> <coughs> And they always said, we're going to set her towards the Cape. That may turn her to the left, you know. So we, we, they had a stake up on the beach. They fastened the water to that and then they'd run her on off and head to the east, or they call it towards the Cape, you know, mm -hmm. to the left. And they had an anchor on, on the offshore end. And the, they put the boat to the end of the net, to the anchor. And they had a strikeaway net on the boat. Uh -huh. So when it got time to uh, when it got time to haul, they would go ahead and tie that net onto the the big net and put the pulling the hauling staff on the top end of the strikeaway net, and the and the warp went on shore. And so they would run that strikeaway net out. And cut off whatever was in that net, in that bite, uh -huh. bite. Okay, and they put the warp clear shore, and then they had the a hold down staff that would hold the end of the net down. It was the one they had on the on the regular hold net when you just used the the main net to hold. But with the strike away net, they put that on the end of it, and then they they could take their time all down by hand. And three to four, we get on that warp and work the end of that ashore, and then everybody sat down, and they just pulled. It was all pulling. Just pulling. Now this is the first time I've heard about a strikeaway net, uh -huh. and you'd think I'd have heard about that before. Oh yeah, about. Uh, uh, you got a lot of stories. There's a lot of does. things like that, you know. I've had. Rodney can't really help you get a hold of. I know. I've had about the the bread that your dad made. On the boat. The bread, what, what, my hair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a time. I had a bad thing. Tell, tell that story, would well, you mind? We were up on the west side of Pamico Sound one 
<laughs> so one night they're dragging, you know. And I said, I'm going get home worn out. I had to call every one of the shrimp that we caught, you know, kind of. Granddad was blind, and the, his finger hanging four crabs all the time, <laughs> and the blood of pouring. I got oh, bless his heart. Oh, and he get so worried he'd go to stomping. I said, Granddad, you stomping the shrimp? But he was trying to kill every crab in the poor that boat. <laughs> <laughs> it was boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but anyway, uh, things slacked off, and uh, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of scraps, so Daddy would make longer drags. In, in other words, where you make an hour drive, an uh, hour drag, you can make it as much as a two-hour drag, okay? Well, I took advantage of that little time I had, and I went in there, and I slept on the locker. Of course, it was soft wood and juniper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any matter. <laughs> well, I laid on the locker, and he had made up a, a pan of bread about this big around. About 18 and, inches around, yeah. like a big pizza. Yeah, about like that. Homemade like Yeah, and there was that there. But see, I didn't know that. So I go in there and I lay down on the locker, you know, and I, I just lay my head down, and, and it was... I enjoyed that little boat of playing in that puddle under the camp there. Because, you know, pulling it around in there. He drove a nail in it and tied a string on it for me. And they went on fishing, whatever they're doing. And I'm I'm up there playing. Uncle Edmund is inside. He, he keeps an eye on me, you know, whatever. And here I am playing around that. He said, hold it a minute, buddy. He said, do you remember, do you, are you sure you remember that? I said, I can do, I sure do. He said, you know what, you were five years old. I said, yeah, well, I wasn't very big. But I remember that. I see it now. Mm -hmm. I see it now, the way it looked. But in my old pilot, and one night, I slept with Uncle Ed. And one night, we had turned in, he he could go lay down whenever he got finished, whatever we're doing, you know. And so he said, crawl in here with me. I crawl in there with Uncle Edward. And we were laying there, and all of a sudden, it felt like the, the floor was coming up. Something was bumping under that floor. I mean, like nobody business, you know. And I said, I said, what is that? And he said, oh, it's, uh, it may be King Neptune. <laughs> He said, uh, he's uh, checking you out. He said, uh, he, he'll get uh, uh, bad boys. He's after bad boys. And of course, I, I spoke up to him, you know. And, and uh, he saw that it was taking effect on me. So he didn't make it very lengthy, you know. Finally, finally, he said, no, man. He said, that's the sheep rubbing their horns on the floor, Joyce. I said, oh, it is. They would bump the, the joint and they would rub their horns. You know? Oh, my God. The sheep, the sheep would come there late at night and gather under that camp. How about that? And that, that became a habit, you know. Uh-huh. They got used to doing that. So, And that one particular night, uh, uh, I didn't know what that was. You thought King Neptune had Boom, you. boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> You know, the old ram <laughs> rubbing her own. <coughs> he said, "You don't be afraid." He said, uh, it's, <laughs> "It's only the sheep." So, said, so when you went to a camp over there, how long did you stay? Well, uh, in time, over to, over to Shaker. The whole week, you know. You would stay a they week were, and work and. Yeah, they, well, I didn't do much work. Well, down, not you, but, but I mean, later on, I did. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, they come home uh, uh, either late Friday evening or early Saturday morning, and then everybody ended up in Beaufort. Well, Saturday was a grub-up day. Grub-up day? Yeah, yeah, grub-up day. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? That means, <laughs> What's that mean, Bird? It means you got to buy groceries. <laughs> oh, grub-up. Oh, okay, yeah, buy yeah. groceries. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. Grub, had to have grub. Uh, got to have grub. <laughs> anyway, kind of, now when I was uh, 12 years old, when I was 12 years old, uh, they had just finished the Rose Brothers first. Now, see, I went over in the old J&M Lewis uh, uh, 
some Mr. Lewis in Moorhead, a granddad bought the old boat from him. Mm -hmm. And it was J.M. Lewis was the name of the old boat. Mm -hmm. She was an old straight sided boat with square stern in her. And the cabins were about this high in her with square windows like they do old down the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. It was like the, the style of the design. And I can remember I just could reach the handrails walking around the edge of that cabin. And I couldn't have been worried for two minutes. Right. But after all this this was done, and I was around 12 years old when they finished Rose Brothers first, I, uh, my granddad was Justice of the Peace. And every Saturday morning, he had to be in his office at 8 o'clock in Beaufort. Well, that gave me the responsibility of seeing that he got to Beaufort. So I would take him aboard the boat, and I'd secure the, the tie-up line. Uh, on the, see, we had a piling put down, and we had a rack on top that would turn. And uh, that was on a spike where it would turn, you know. And uh, the uh, tie-up line was on the post, but in pretty weather, you could fasten her to that rim, you know. And... Uh, uh, unless the weather's going to get bad, and then you take the horse which is around the piling, you know, and then you put that on the pole, pole post, mm -hmm. the pole and you post had a short tie line that you had to go over that and secure it to the post, mm -hmm. you know, with a, bow a boat. Yeah, with a short line, mm -hmm. and a, a secure line. I did that, and I would hang it on the post and back her away from the piling and roll her down and kick her around and head to Beaufort. And my destination was Charlie Hill, C.V. Hill's dock. And how long was that boat? She's 40 foot, 2 inches. And I took, I took him to uh, Beaufort. And how old were you? 12. 40 foot boat? Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd put her to the dock and never get everything secured. And he would take out, he'd take his pocket watch out. Well, buddy, I got to go now. He'd take off. he walked from there, from Charlie Hill, to the courthouse. he walked there. He didn't mind it. And he could get around the best time. And, and what was his name? George M. Rose. George M. Rose, Justice of the Peace for yeah. Carteret County. That's right. Yeah. Well, he served, I think it was part of two terms. Mm -hmm. One term, and, and I don't know about the other, really, that part. I, I had gotten away from it then. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the other uh, the family might have took up where I left off. And it had something to do with my school and everything. But this was Saturday morning, and I had to have him to Beaufort to the courthouse at 8 o'clock. <coughs> so I get up daylight, Johnny. I get up daylight now. I'm 12 years old, but I'm up and at it. And here he comes across the road, and he's, he's ready to go. And, uh, so he had a, a suit on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vest? He looked, looked pretty good. You know. half, like half-dressed half or something, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, and he wore a hat. He wore a felt hat. Mm -hmm. He looked half-distinguished, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but he, see, he was blind with cataracts, and he could see through little openings, he said, look through, through the clouds, and that's the only way I can read, he said. But he said, over there, read the Bible, you know, and, and sometimes he talked to himself what time to read. He had a, a tendency to talk, talk to himself. Okay. I said, Granddad, how come you talk to yourself? He said, well, when I don't have anybody to talk to, it's all I've got left. <laughs> I, I talk to myself. <laughs> Anyway, I'm good company. <laughs> yeah, it was very early in the morning when I would get to, even get to Beaufort. Did you pick him up too? Or? Oh, well, the, On boat, that day? the boat's tied up. Now, I also had anywhere from three to five grocery lists for the neighborhood. Oh, so you had to go buy everybody's I, groceries too. I delivered the grocery list. Yes. The, uh, uh, and Charles and, and old man Charlie uh, would fill the orders. And there were always three to four black boys, about my age or a little older. They were just hanging around. 
because they know that Captain George was going to pay them if they loaded the stuff off. Right. That was arranged. Right. So here they were. I didn't. I hardly have. I would. I'd carry something down there, you know. And we'd load it on, and then boys there, they'd handle whatever was going. They would load it on, and uh, 12 o'clock, I'd start looking for granddad, because it was from 8 to 12, the morning part. And here he would come. He'd come in on down there and say, well, boys, it's time to settle up. And he'd give each one of those black boys a quarter uh, for loading that stuff on. Wow. And, uh, um, now, where was the dock again? I didn't get any quarter. If you went to downtown Beaufort today, where would that dock be in relation to what's there today? Uh, you know what's there? He hasn't been down there much. <laughs> well, it's down about four or five uh, houses west of where uh, uh, Way, Way William Way's 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 yeah, William Way, Way Brothers. That's Way's where that restaurant is. Big restaurant. Oh, the Buford House restaurant? The Buford House. Yeah. yeah. That was just west of where the old fish house was. Okay. All right. Even next door, like. Right. Know. Before. And, and then farther west would be Charlie Hill, uh, Doc, and C.D. Jones Grocery. Right. See, Hill and Jones Grocery right Jim together. Brown now, uh, uh, Billy was a couple, Billy Best was a couple years older than I am. And this is in the 40s. And he was a clean-up boy, and he had a bicycle with a basket about that big on the front of it, and he'd deliver groceries right there in town from, from uh, Jones's, <laughs> Jones's uh, grocery. So Mr. Best has been in the grocery business all his life? Practically yeah. all his life, was yes, sir. This was like in the late 40s because it was his fall started in 1947 right. uh, when I was taking Granddad to him. And that went on for a while, you know. The first grocery store here after we were married. Well, Earl Davis had an old store uh, just to the east where the best supermarket is now. Mm -hmm. It's on the, uh, toward, towards the east end of his east parking lot is where uh, Earl the Davis' old, store. old store. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so he leased that old store, and, and that's where he made his start here on the island, see. And, um, uh, of course, all that's gone now, and it's just a parking lot. But now, years before that, before Earl built that store, his dad, Charlie Davis, old man Charlie Davis, had his store down on the dock to the landing. Oh, on the dock. Uh -huh. Now, that's where you went to go look for your guitar that you were waiting for, right? Well, that, I had to go, store? I walked under the face house. I walked under the face house and continued on until I got up to, uh, to the post office. And then uh, just west of the post office where, where Cleveland Davis's dock was. That was a face, face house dock. And his face house was built out on the end of that dock. But Mr. Dave, Mr. Charlie Davis's uh, store was just on the dock. Uh, it was a clear shore, you know. That was built on the dock. And that was <coughs> <office> too. <coughs> store and post office. Store and post office. What was it? No, honey, it was general merchandise. Okay. Store. Who, who ran the post office? Floyd. And yeah. uh, and Dan Floyd and his dad Dan Young. Okay. Floyd Young and Dan Young, his dad. They live. You walk out the back of the store in the in the house, and you know, it's all right there again. Right. Is that where the mail boat came and docked it? Yeah, they had a, a, a short dock with a T on the end where the pet mail boat would tie up. Sometime when the tide was way down, he he had to kick her in there, and then he throw us a line of the gunners, whoever they might be at the time. He throw them a line like that, and they pull. Try to pull her into the dock. Uh, the, she was about 38 foot. I, I, I've yeah. seen the model you made for the museum. Yeah, uh, it's right there. One like that. Yep. He took his commercial, sort of like it. His commercial boat and built a little cabin out for uh, passengers. 
and I've been a boarder in and out uh, a number of times. And through that door, he stepped on a little step inside, and I just set the engine right now, you know. I just had to be stepped in there. <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah. But I had a lot of responsibility trying to get Granddad to Beaufort uh, every Saturday morning. So I went to school. And during the school, uh, those uh, evenings, uh, in in the fall, when I had to quit, I had to quit painting or anything to go to school. See. The winter months I didn't do, didn't go no fishing or nothing. But they would come down with boatloads of fish to uh, David, Stacy Davis' his old fish house down there. And I would grab a sandwich or a biscuit or something and put and grab my knee boots and I'd go down to the fish house. And they had promised me fifty cent hour. If I would come down there whenever they had, when they had fees, is what right. I had that right. And, but I, I, I get word that they, they uh, so so he got a boatload of fees down there. And uh, they started bringing them in and everything. I go down there and I work till as late as 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, try, and what I was trying to do is maintain uh, four hours each evening. To the face house, so he gave me two dollars, and that's what I did. Now I was shoveling face, rolling face, hand truck, mm -hmm. and uh, we we rolled it in the west side of the house. And they didn't have tables or anything. They did that in the middle of the floor. There's a ring of ladies were around that pile of face, and they were that high in the, that face house floor. About, about four and, foot high. Yeah, and they was they were sorting them out, you know. They had a, each one of them had a basket on each side of her, and uh, they were throwing the spots in one, and the trout in another one, and somebody was throwing flounders in that one over there, and it was like that, you know, mm -hmm. because it was a long haul of stuff, and it was mixed or mixed up. And uh, they worked till a uh, half a night sometime. Uh, uh, those ladies on their knees in that floor, uh, were, and I, I, I thought since then, why, why didn't they have some sort of Convey or they had them other places, you know. But uh, and tables, you, you can stand there a lot longer. And you can crawl around on your knees. Gosh, <coughs> that's when women were women and men were men. That's right, Connie. And uh, I, I had to work real hard though. But I was promised this an hour, and and I, I worked hard. That, that could buy a lot back then, couldn't it? Yeah. And come Saturday, see, I didn't have a couple of dollars in the pocket. I gave uh, most of it to Mama to help out with, you know. And, and uh, I'd, I'd keep a dollar or two, because all I was going to do mess, you know. But I'd go on town, and I, I'd go there to the old Bell drugstore. And the lady, little little short lady in there, she fixed me a pimento cheese, toasted pimento cheese sandwich mm -hmm. and a milkshake. I think it was about 10 cents for the each. I mean, I'll shake. And they bring out a can thing, about this far, and a, a, I call it a vase. And you pour it in that vase, you know, and take her and the canister back, and she wash it and fix it up for somebody else. I sit there and enjoy that and toast it from there too, or chicken salad, whichever I choose. And, uh, I got that put away and everything, and then I'd move around from one store to the other. Right. I'd go down there and talk to Milton Litton. Uh, you know, he called me Rosie. <laughs> hey, I'm Rosie. And, and uh, I go in there, but you could get a you get a, a pair of socks for ten cents. A pair of socks for ten. For ten cents, and uh, it would be like fifty cents for a nice belt, and a dollar and twenty nine cent when you start getting a. Uh, Leather loafers in there. Dollar twenty nine cent is what I paid for them. The first ones. Then they went up. Everything started going up. <coughs> <coughs> do you do you know on that Shackerford uh, map? Mm -hmm. uh, look look on the uh, one on, one underneath it there. Underneath. Yeah, that one that has a long piece. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Where would you say the Chrissy Wright come ashore? Do you know about? 
Well, where traditionally it, people have thought it was. Yeah, it was long you know, after it was uh, somewhat west of Tom Martin's. Uh, in this little so just group. just look and no see. no right here this group of hills right here mm -hmm. well it was west of that so it would be somewhere in this area here mark a line there and then put uh, Chrissy Wright and uh, Right in here. Yeah, make it a dark line so I uh -huh. can see it. Yeah. And, and, uh, well, see, he was trying to get in uh, under the cape. Evidently, the wind must have been northeast or southeast. And he was trying to get her. He got around the shoals and he finally had to had to put her ashore. She was about to sink on him. Had to put her ashore here. You know. And that, that was a sloop. Mm -hmm. Sloop design uh, rig. And um, there were. Was there any of your crowd that was in on that uh, uh, going out to see to uh, get them off uh, uh, Josephus? I think uh, Willis was one of the. Josephus crew. Willis, that was uh, Mr. Uh, 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 it was uh, um, Lee Willis's great granddad. Sam Mill you know, East, Sam East was uh, Lee's dad, Sammy Willard, Sam East, Sam East, and, uh, and his dad was, I think it's Josephus. Yeah, Josephus. If we got it right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and. That was uh, Captain Kelly and Samuel, uh, yeah, you had to be, uh, uh, uh Lee's great granddad. Right. That's the only thing I can figure out. Hmm. Lee would go in and Henry. Oh, and do, you, do you remember any of the cabins on Shackelford and the families that, that owned them? Do you know approximate locations and where they and who they were? Well, let's see now. The Corn Show Mars. That, that's, uh, this is supposed to. Let me see. Now this is Banks Bay here. This is he said Brian Hamlet by Bay and Brian Hamlet. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. A great Marshall Island. Well now it's like this now. Uh, that one, that name has changed. This is uh, we call it Daniel Island. Danny Rose um, he had a little camp built right on here and uh, he would come up had a net spread and everything there on there. Put, put a little X and then put Danny Rose camp mm -hmm. what is that island called today what's the name it's got on the, on it on that thing that's that's the only name I got. I don't think it had a name, really. Okay. You know, but we call it. I always called it Danny's Island. Danny called, Rose Camp, and uh -huh. that was on the. Uh huh. Yeah, he had a little boat, and he had his net spread uh, right there, right next to the camp, and the camp was it was no bigger than this room, and real little. Which is about thing. 16 by what? Well, I would say that would be about a 12 by 14. 12 by 14. It wasn't big. Yeah, you know, you had bunks in one end of it and a little, just a little table or something to sit down to. Well, you didn't want to have to heat down. it. You didn't want to have to heat it. No. <laughs> so you want it small. Yeah. Okay, it, somebody else's t uh, camp out there that you... Remember? Well, now over up here, up towards uh, uh, the cow. Uh, no, I mean the, the, the horse show. I'm trying to locate that. Dr. Moore had a place up there. It was well, well Creek. It was way up there. And, and his aunt and, and uncle had a camp way up at Wade Shore. Camp Creek. 
Jack Lawn. And we call this Black Duck Bay in here. We call that Black Duck Bay. Right, right down in there. Black uh -huh. Duck Bay. You never had anybody tell you all that before. No, try. Well, and that's one of the uh, shortcomings of the the information that that's there that that is not there is who owns, you know, what and what where their camps were and and uh, the local names of the water. I mean, a lot of these topography maps do use local names. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But well, now Jack's always been Jack on right now. Uh -huh. <coughs> but <coughs> Sam Winter's lump and the crab. Yeah, stole. Sam Winter's lump. Yeah. Sam Winter's lump and the crab, uh, the crab stole. Are oh, you here? The crab stole and Sam Winter's lump. That's, that's that much is right in Jack's Island. Now the shooting hammer. That don't sound familiar to me. A uh, shooting hammer. They shot. They show a loon and everything all up and down in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's according to what rabbit they, they took. And uh, you can almost figure if the wind were blowing hard to the west, they'd, they'd probably pass over on the east end of the bank. I gotcha. See, they figure it is. <laughs> I never was in no target shooting with a loon. <laughs> and the Federals had to move in there one day. There were two helicopters. And uh, they had put out a number of, of officers, and they were covering it. They had the right tickets and hard they could write them. The crowd, you know, just couldn't hide from it. They caught them in the rain act. Delma Willis was down here on towards the east end, you know, and he saw this man, this agent, coming toward him. He took his gun, brand new, uh, 12 gauge automatic. He had just bought her. And he said, I'll never get out of this. So he takes her and he sticks her down in the mud and right on down. And then he takes his foot and stomps her down. He's standing on the butt plate. When the man walks up there to him, he says, and Delmer says, uh, have you ever seen anything like this? <laughs> that, that, this is a disgrace. The man, they're, they're killing everyone alone, man. Oh, wow. What are you going to do about that? Now? <laughs> and he's standing on his gun, you know. All the same time. <laughs> His brand new gun. Yeah, said what? What? Are, what? Are, what are you gonna do? You got to do something about this. You gonna kill all the loon? And the man told me a while, you know. He said, I don't know. It is. It's bad. And, uh, but something has to be done about it. So the man leaves, walking on off. <coughs> After it all calms down, and they. they Pick them up and they leave. He goes there and he tries to get a hold of that gun. And he pulls on her. Finally, he comes out right in this one big long thing of mud. That brand new. Oh, brand man. new. He just got it. Uh, and what was his name again? Uh, uh, Dalma Willis. Dalma? Uh huh. D A L M A? D, D E L M A. Dalma. Okay. Dalma. Dalma Willis. Willis. And uh, it was Lloyd Willis, his brother, uh, the one built boats along here, you know. Oh, okay, Lloyd. okay. You, you know yeah, Lloyd, yeah, yeah, yeah. Short fella. <laughs> but uh, Delma was always in trouble some kind of way. Uh, they rode to Atlantic Beach one evening. They A lot of them would go to the beach to drink and mess up, what I call it. I, I never did. Yeah. Yes, okay. I didn't go to the beach. <laughs> Well, I tried to act with a little bit of sense, and uh, uh, the boardwalk, and you know, and all that. And I, it was a little bit interesting, but that wasn't that wasn't a habit with me. And uh, so they were over there in one of the joints, and in came three Marines, and they had the, some something in mind they wanted to do, and they came in and they got talking. And he said, uh, well, he and I and him, well, we can wipe this place out. We can whip anything in here. They're in the Marine Corps. Yeah, right, They've right. been training. Right. You know, and they felt real proud. And Lloyd had Delma in one arm, and he, they rolled around. And he said he beat the Marines off of 
with that one arm <laughs> You know, hanging oh, on him down trying to hold him up, you know. <laughs> they knocked him right down when I had a couple of them, well, he was a drunk. <coughs> and uh, it said Lloyd was there, hanging on down, uh, beating them off out of him. <laughs> and they said they whipped them three Marines, the rest of the tribe. They whipped them so bad, they, they half crawled out of the place. Oh, my gosh. And that, you can't go in a place and say, I'm going to whip everything in here. It don't always work out. Not when there's a down easter in the crowd. I no, 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 no. No sir, buddy. Uh, they they get you hard too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, could you get me a, a, He's a glass tissue? of water. tissue, darling? Uh, well, uh, listen, I don't want to wear you out too much today, but I, I'm hoping I can come back and with and uh, I'll bring you another ma whole map of okay. Shackford and we'll yeah. and, and one that has the whole cape on it. Uh huh. And, yeah. Uh, so we can get that uh, Thank you, other location on there. Um, Connie, there's there's so much there's so much to know about it. Oh, I know, I know. Um, there's some uh, old maps in the archives too that I have seen that, and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, houses that they show mm -hmm. as little red dots are mostly on the sound side. Yeah, that's right. Mostly, you, uh, well, do you know Jackie Page. Jackie Page. John Edward Page. John Edward Page. Uh, he's one of my classmates. Well, he's got all kinds of maps. He, he's worked in Raleigh. Oh, really? Well, yeah. let me, uh... John I mean, Edward Page. Now, but he did, he did Jackie Page. Well, it's John Edward. Oh, John. We're buddy. He brought buddy. him a map of, what was it, honey? Of the island, wasn't well, it? Well, let me explain it now. Yeah. It's uh, the east half of Harper's Island in the early 1700s. Oh, wow. Belonged to Mr. Uh, uh, yeah, Harker. Yeah, what happened Wow. Mr. Ebenezer Harker. Now, we're living on the old man's uh, property right now, here. Uh -huh. A lot of people think that he, they lived up on the west end of the island. <coughs> Funny, the only thing we could figure out is that people were so superstitious, and those, at those times, that when anybody passed away, they put him in a cart or the box, take him as far away from the homestead as they could get. So the hat, you know, if he had a hat or had any uh, ghost or any, hat, yeah, any problem with the family, he might bring him back on right after death. Right. So they took him. trail it went clear down almost to the point and it went right on by mr johnson the elder's dad where, where are those graves though are they they're on the right of that when you that go road. down that driveway, driveway yeah they'll be on the right if if i was coming on the island coming over the bridge uh -huh. it would be the first road to the right no 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 you pass the second one good and then there where the harbor starts yeah <coughs> Cut it, I'm sorry about that. No, do you need a uh, glass of water? It goes, yeah. Glass of water. It goes uh, right by the north end of the harbor. Uh huh, you know, uh huh, uh huh. On this side of the bridge, the harbor. Right, right, right. And it goes right by the north end of that and goes right on back. Now, that's the old, old original path. Well, I heard, not too long, I guess. The people that have <coughs> them, they were those graves moved, but I don't think they, I don't think they moved. I don't see why they should. They should leave them there. Are, are they stone markers or wood markers? Or? I don't know. I've never well, seen them. Well, I think I might just drive. It's mostly cypress post, uh, Connie. They were mostly, at that time, they used cypress post. I think the most cypress grave markers I've seen in the county are up to Lola. Mm -hmm. uh, up there yeah. by the, um, you know, you go down, you get on Cedar Island and you go <coughs> take that uh, right like you're going to the, uh, yeah. And that church, that first church on the on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Underneath that tree, there's a tree and there's the most wooden markers of any 
graveyard I've seen in Carter County. I know, yeah. Hmm. That's what There's also the there. most mosquitoes. Let me make that clear. <laughs> Mr. Hardy, you know, I must have been about 15, maybe. And I went to the post office one day, and there on the step sat Mr. Hardy and Guthrie, Marvin's dad, Hardy and Guthrie. And he was sitting there, and he had that post, and he was carving his name on it. So you still like the old times, you know. And he was carving his name, and he was born, under it, born on such such a day, and and uh, died. He put died, and he left the space. And for maybe Margaret or somebody would go to finish. Carve it in. When he died, because he couldn't do it after he died. Well, my grandfather made his on Heather's phone. Uh huh. Funny. When he died, they didn't put it at the head of his grave. For some reason, it wasn't put there. And it was overhead in the attic of my mom's house. Yeah, darling. And, uh, That's, uh, uh, and it, it just shoved it. up in there. Oh, so it's still there? It's still there in the high school. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You should get that. As far as I know, it's still in there. You, you need to get that for Now, Mr. Harden died the following week. He knew it was coming, so he took time. He had a, a post about like this and rammed the top off of it. He had put his date of birth and, and died and uh, uh, his name, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, he died about a week later. Oh my God! The old man died. He knew it was coming. He knew it. Did he? There's something about it that when you get down and get so weak, you say I can't last long like this. Now well, that's a that's a good sign. Atlantic. Yeah, there's some roses to Atlantic. Who is it? Who is yeah, it? Uh, Pittman's. My great grandma, great granddad, and uh, Rose. Oh, uh, Rose. And uh, that's a great cemetery down there. Yeah. Now the Scots, they're all buried over here in Victoria Cemetery. Well, see, we're going to go to Atlantic at some time or other, and we haven't gotten there yet. I can't get down to, there. Uh, I to try right. to find those graves he's talking about. Well, you, you need well, to the, do that. Well, some of the crowd know about it, huh? And Rudolph Nelson, man, he, we were talking about it one day, and he said, we ought, we're going to have to get down there. You know, he's talking about it. Well, we don't, <laughs> we don't know now. <laughs> Uh, I should. He's then you know my daddy's got had the same name, but well he uh, he had a what was it speech impairment. He's my third cousin. His dad Bradford Nelson here would be my second cousin. Dad's first cousin. You know. uh, that was a great aunt Caroline's son uh, Bradford. Uh, what were the names that's buried at Atlantic? Huh? The names of your people that are buried down there. To Atlantic. Mm -hmm. It's George Rose and Mary Elizabeth Hill Rose. That's where me, uh, me and Karen are, are kin, some kind of cousins, you know. So she was from Marshallburg, Meredith Hill? Right? Grandma was born and played her in Marshallburg. And that's why old man Julian Brown and her were so good of friends. Uh -huh. They were a little younger together playing. Oh my gosh. Uh, Marshallburg <laughs> How about that? Way back, you know, and... Uh, well, guess, he, guess he, who I'm interviewing tomorrow? Uh, Elmo Gaskell from Atlantic. Yeah, oh, Elmo. Yeah. yeah, he's coming to here to the island. He says he comes... He says he makes the rounds on Fridays. Yeah. And talks to everybody he knows. Uh, yeah, I know. He loves to catch up on things, too, you know. Uh, uh, Jack Goodman was a, a good one for that, you know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Julian Brown used to visit Grandma over here, and whenever he came over, I'd go over there and listen, wanted to hear what they had to say and talk, you know. And uh, one day I was over there, and uh, Connie, at that time, the white heron and the egret had completely covered Brown's Island. Oh they took a place to use, and I said, if I could get over there and shoot me a couple of them here, wait here, and, and we'll have a nice dinner. 
Hair and tuck with rutabagas and all that stuff. Real good. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know what hair was good with rutabagas. Yeah. <laughs> And, <laughs> never put it. And the blue hair is top. <laughs> but you had to parboil it for about two hours with, <laughs> with baking soda, and so you kill the fish. Get the fish taste out. And man, it tastes like goose or anything else. Wow. But anyway, uh, I was, uh, he was over there one of his visits. I went over there and I said, Mister Brown, I said, you know. Brown Island is full of white hair and, and egret and whatever. He said, yes, I know all about that, because it's like a snow-capped mountain. Wow. That's what Brown Island looks like then. And I said, do you reckon it's possible if I were to go over there and shoot a couple of them and have them for dinner? He said, it sounds interesting, doesn't it? I said, yeah, it sure does. He said, but there's one one catch to that. If I let you go over there and the rest of the crowd sees you over there, they'll shoot everyone of them. And I wouldn't have that. <coughs> he said, maybe you better not go over there, buddy. I said, no. well, I didn't think anyway. I said, I understand what you're saying. And I never did get a chance to go over there again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice of you not to. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you couldn't right. do it anyway. You never know. But that's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, uh, all these boys around here, they'd be over there every day, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shooting the whole thing, I couldn't. I couldn't afford that. You know. So uh, he said, uh, maybe, maybe you better not go over there. You know. That's old man Julian Brown the first. Well, yeah. I tell you, I think of the world of his uh, the third. <laughs> yeah, J.M. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a nice fellow. He, um, <laughs> we've been friends right good a long time, man. Mm -hmm. And Joey and his dad, uh, he was okay. Uh, Roy was Roy was tough, and he was a big man now. Well, listen, I'm going to... He had a hand that big, I reckon, and gone. That a big, and he stood about six foot, three or four. <laughs> and they said... Um, had hands as big as... Big as... They, they about, not ten inches across? Yeah, they had a row in, in his finger. Goodness. Had what in his finger? Row. Row? <laughs> his fingers were big. Oh, my God. Uh, they said, they said <laughs> he was over there brown row in one day. He went over and shoot some ducks and birds or whatever. And, um, and Eagle clawed him, clawed his gun up, uh, he attacked him. And he took, took her by the barrel and beat the heck out of that bear eagle. Killed him. And another story they told about him said uh, he had him a horse, you know. He loved his horse. But every once in a while he would nip him, grab him, bite him, you know. Oh. And he got him did that until he got tired of it. And he hold that big fist back and hit that horse right between the eyes. Then the horse died in the next week. Oh. Um, you know. <laughs> Concussion. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> another, another time, he said he was over there and here come a, here come a black bear toward him. He said, this is it for me. He said, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try him anyway. Here comes the bear, and he stood right up, you know, and put his arm, put his arm right around uh, Roy. And uh, Roy said, this is it, looks like. And he said, he started squeezing on Roy. And Roy had his arm around him. And they started squeezing, squeezing harder and harder and harder and harder until he killed the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Roy squeezed the life out of that bear. Roy, he was no baby. Was Roy it? Brown, man, I didn't hear about him. There's all kinds of Whoa. tales. <laughs> you know, kind of, yeah, it's all, all kinds of things. You know. I've heard about Decatur Gillikin. Oh, Decatur. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a little cap, you know, and he said, uh, "Well, I just set him over on the other side, and we had to walk clear around the end of that fence." He set him over there. You know. He kept doing that, and first thing you know, he. The cap was getting bigger. So he said, keep setting him over until he was 
Oh, cow. <laughs> he said, up. he said, 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 he that's the strongest man that I've ever seen, that is. Got to be. If he got cow up and set her over the fence, yeah. it's not light, uh -uh. you know. <laughs> so, yeah, but he, they figured that he started out when it was real small and they exercised. As the thing grew, he just put him back over there, you know, like that. Wow. And, uh, uh, I don't know how true all that <laughs> But it's yeah. a good story. It, it is a good story. It's a good yeah. story. He's a local legend. My great uncle John Rose, granddad's brother, he'd be about to sleep his feet. On the west side of sleep his feet, he goes runs down in the creek. And he had a skiff in there. And one night uh, there come the biggest squall ever in the most rain. And he told Aunt Sue, said, I got to go down and bail my skiff out. So he leaves, and he's going all night. And the next morning, the sun comes up, and Aunt Sue said, Where did John I don't know if something could have happened to him, I reckon. So she finally, here comes John walking up the path. <laughs> Looks like he been through a storm or something, you know, and he was worn out, came on in and flopped down there, and, and so I said, John, where have you been all night long? He said, I've been bailing my skiff out. I went down there, and my skiff had gone, my bailer had gone to drift, so I, I had to use a water basket. <laughs> <laughs> No, he did some work. Now, that's hard work. We bailed with a wire basket. He bailed right out of that wire basket. Oh, <laughs> he was doing something like that. that way. Oh, my God. They said he had the fastest sailor's gift uh, on the East Coast. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. said if you were standing on her cap, when she was underway, you were standing on the cap, and you went to step in her stern, you ste you, you'd you step out of uh, Overboard. Overboard. <laughs> he said, she'll sell right up under you. Yeah. Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, I, I, it would look like she was about the fastest. Uh, I'd have to say he's uh, the fastest one I've ever seen, heard of. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he went to the church one evening. Had to go around the head of the creek, uh, Slip Street, and go up to the old church in uh, Marshallburg. And so they kept in church till 12, 1 o'clock, you know. And at point, they, the church let out, and he came on back home and said, I think I'll cut through the graveyard and make it a little quicker now. And, uh, so, so he, uh. He's been on a roll since you've been on that phone. Hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I've heard some great stuff. <laughs> and he said, uh, they was walking along, came to the graveyard, and. There stood a hand, you know, a black and white hand. He said, I'm going to walk. You see how close I can get to him? Walk right up there real sneak. He's sneak right up there real slow, you know. And he grabbed and got a hold of something. He said, man. So the hand took off running. He ran right behind him. But he went on one side of the tree and the hat went on the other. And whatever it was, he tore off. <laughs> so he got, finally got home. And we in there and threw it on across the table. It was uh, the tail off of something. <laughs> Man, mm -hmm. I pulled that hat tail off. The next morning, uh, his neighbor came, came over and they get talking and everything. He said, I went out there this morning and that new calf there, uh, something happened to his tail. He got no tail on that cat. And uh, after John got to thinking, he said, Well, come on in here a minute. They go on in there like that. He said, You think that can be it? And, uh, and the old fella said, You sure does look like it. <laughs> you know, and to come point out, it was a fella's calf. And he pulled his tail off by the roots. <laughs> <laughs> when he went around that point, really, you know. <coughs> <coughs> they call him Captain John 
rest of his life. Cat tail John. Cat. Calf. Calf tail. Calf tail John. Calf tail John. He said uh, 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 he had a little slime one day uh, when he come over to visit Grandma over here. Uh, he always had his cane, you know, and he was there spinning his cane while he was talking to him. I remember him, you know. Uh -huh. and he weren't he weren't as big as I am. A little fella, looking like Jeff. Jeff is a most. Oh, wow. Jeff is shaped just like him. And Aunt Sue was about six foot two. Wow. There she was, and there's nothing on. <laughs> and we've got a picture. Yeah, we do. In the in the thirties, oh, wasn't it? Well, we've got a picture of them two standing there together. There's a, there's that great Aunt Sue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. She's a big woman, uh, tall, you know. Yeah, Sue, uh, yeah. Uh, what was Sue's maiden name? She a star? <laughs> uh, you got me. You got me. Uh, they, they grow big. You got me that kind of name. You sure have. Now, our grandma and mother came from old Davis family. Oh. In Marshburg. Uh -huh. See, uh, her name was, they called her Miss Abby. Her name was Abigail Davis. That's my great grandma. And Abigail she came Davis. from the old Davis family, you know. Uh -huh. Oh, there's two or three of them. And, uh, I did know some names. But uh, uh, David over here, his wife is Dottie, was Dottie Davis. And she said uh, she came from, uh, from Marshallburg. I said, well, well, Donnie, uh, you and I could be cousins. And she looked at me and said, huh, I doubt it. And ever since then, she she hasn't wanted to even talk about it. <laughs> she, she, she don't want to be kin to me, you know. Well, her loss. They're rich people. <laughs> well, maybe you don't want to be kin to them. <laughs> That's the way that goes. Yeah. Abigail Davis. Well, listen, I, I, I have worn you out. And, and no, you yeah, haven't, honey. No, no way you want yeah. me to have worn it. But uh, I thank you. I'll, I'm going to call you again. And, and, uh, like we said before. I appreciate you. You're just like family to me. Now, the Mason family, the old original Mason family and the Rose family have been the best of friends as far back as I can remember and, and granddad. Yeah. Now, I uh, see great, 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 great grand, no, great, great, great granddad moved from uh, Pamlico County to Hyde County in 1710. Wow. In 1712, the original, old original Mason family moved in the same area, and that's what made up the little village of, of what we call now. Uh, Lucan's? No. Swan Quarter. Swan Quarter. Swan Quarter, and this is Hunt Quarter. Mm -hmm. That ain't Hunt Quarter, and that, that was Swan Quarter. And, uh, but the name, they took on the name of Swan Quarter a number of years later after right. they had settled there. And when they first uh, settled there, they called that bay just the western road of the building, Road Bay. Right. And your, Still called. your great, great, great granddaddy, uh, whoever, uh, said, if you're going to call that Rose Bay, we're going to call this Mason Town. <laughs> and, and, and it was roughly called Mason Town uh -huh. at the time until it took on the name of Swan Corner. How about that? And How about I've that? been there a number of times. Uh, more times in the boat than I will in, on the highway, you know. Now, did I now, tell you? On the highway, uh, you can leave uh, a little Washington. And, and drive nearly about right straight now. Yeah, yeah. And or you can go around and go up through up the canal and go to the, the village. Oh yeah. Now to the right, after you get to the end of the canal, right to the end of it, you can look over there like northeast, and that there's still a stand of pine there by the old homestead, Rose Homestead. Oh wow. And uh, Durwood Rose, uh, Great Uncle Furnace. And the new one, his son, said that he'd been over two or three times to the old homestead and he, there's still some of the logs laying around oh, wow. from the log cabin wow. still right now. Well, 
Oh, that's over here, sleeping. sleeping. And the girl and her husband that bought the place, Jane. What was her name? Powell. Powell. Joanne Powell. Joanne. Joanne. Yeah, yeah, Joanne. Yeah, Joanne. Powell. Joanne Powell. That oh, they that's her. The they bought the house. It they was still sitting. They bought the house, but it was in so bad shape. They, oh. I think they had it torn down. She, about, I yeah. remember her. She, didn't she live in it for a little bit? Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. Uh, she's. They found a snake in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Alan <laughs> said uh, they had to keep buckets around here, you know, or yeah, catch the drip, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it but, you know, they speak up. of it so fondly. I mean, it was fun for them. Yeah. Now, who, this well, is the, I uh, didn't find the picture. I had it just the other day, but this is his grandmother, Grandfather oh, George. He's the one that he was telling you about. Uh-huh. Uh, I had taken both of her. And that's his grandmother. Look how short she was. Yeah, <laughs> he was about six feet tall. Yeah. And that's her there. So she was, Tiny woman. She'd been through a lot of hardships, you know. And uh but she was sitting and talk to you and getting laughing in her belly Do you <laughs> see that right there? Can you see that? What is it? It's a boat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And little sails on it. Yeah, yeah. He made that. Uh, yeah, like oh. for granny, uh, <laughs> Look at that. I had that enlarged. I have it somewhere in there. Let me get I mean, another. And you can't see it very one. clear in there. But, but, uh, but once you point it out, I can see it, sure. Uh, our granddad, I see. Now, this is later on, you know. And, uh, now, was uh, this, this is the gentleman that was the, um, Justice yeah. of the Peace. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What a fine looking yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. His grandpa, he was still living when we got married. Right. Wow. He's named after uh, <laughs> Rosary <laughs> in 1986. Yeah, see, so he was named after his dad, George. Person, yeah, the, the one that's buried to Atlantic is his father. I see. And oh, his wow. daddy, mom and dad, Mary Elizabeth Hill. Mary and and, uh, and George George the person. I wish I could find that picture of John and his wife. Yeah. Well, next time I'm to Atlantic, I'll, I'll go. I'll go tromping brother. through the cemetery and I'll look and see. If I can find them all, yeah. I'll take you down there and show you. Well, so you won't have to tromp around. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I like it well, uh, Connie. Like I told you about the Mason family, uh, he spoke of them uh, many a time. He spoke good about them. And he called out his own name, and there's 100,000. There's 100,000 Masons in his part of the country. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, uh, the, uh, the road, I think the road did I tell you the story about Joe Rose, the Rose that, that went, moved to Moorhead? Well, from... now, Joe was Tommy Gray's uncle. Right. That was Thomas's brother. Right. Joe was only in Joe. Now there's Joe Rose, the first, second, and third. The well, third, he he was was with the police force. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Morehead, Morehead. Well, uh, <coughs> he's the one that the the one that uh, went whaling. The yeah. Joe Rose that went uh -huh. whaling. Yeah. Also played the accordion. Oh, he can play an accordion, a mandolin, piano. I, he's the most musical fellow that's ever been. And and his whole generation, the whole family, can play at something or sing real well. Right, right. They're musical. Right. Well, that's, well, they should be. That's where you got it. Well, <laughs> right? No, no, no. We're no kin. Are you kin to that to, to those roses? No, they're Spanish roses, and we're we're uh, uh, English roses, Scottish and English. Scottish. Roses. Oh my gosh! He's related to Tommy Gray's mother. Oh, yes. Tommy, Tommy mother, their Scott. mother, uh, Sue, was great uncle Charlie, my grandma's brother's daughter, was Tommy Gray's mother. Okay. So that's the way we're kin there on his mom's side. I got gotcha. Miss Sue. And uh, great uncle Charlie, he was the sweetest little old man. He was about that tall. <laughs> and, and he had a beard and mustache. And blind as a bat. <laughs> and and, uh, and Mervyn, Mervyn built him a little seat. There was a little tree in the front of Miss Sue's yard, you know, and he built him a little seat there special for Uncle Charlie. And he'd go there and he sat there with him. He had a cane, walking cane, you know, he was playing with that cane all the time. And I'd go, i say, hey, Uncle Charlie, 
He said, hey, my boy. I said, now, which one are you? <laughs> and I tell him, I said, I'm Annie's grandson. He said, Annie, how's Annie doing? And I said, she's doing okay, you know, like I we sitting there and talk. And he's never seen me yet. Because <laughs> he, he couldn't see you. He brought her to bed. Um, couldn't see a Cataracts, thing. I reckon. Yeah, most likely, you know, I, I guess that's what it was because his eyes were blurred, you know. And, yeah. And, uh, kind of milked over. But he, he'd sit there and if he got talking about some little family, his tears would come down, you know, his real uh, sentimental. He was a Christian fella or whatever. And he would get Tom to come out there and Tom would stand there. He said, sing about the wine and end up about the lifeboat. Tom. Mm -hmm. And Tom would stand there and beat her and sing uh, one of them old songs he loved. Throw so out the lifeline or something like that? Well, that one, uh, along with uh, uh, Make Room in the Lifeboat for Me. I don't know that one. I'm going to have to look that one up. Well, that's uh, they, will, they always want me to do something. That's 300 that's... years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I hear somebody sing it, that's, I can learn it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, listen, I'm yeah. going to officially uh, end the tape because this is a... Do you remember the night we were down there? And <laughs> we, had some, that's right. we had some visitors and guests, musicians. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and you, you introduced the last railway to heaven, that oh, yeah. song. Yeah. And I just started... I started leading off with uh -huh. it, and it was just like somebody had turned me off or grabbed my guitar. She cut off just like that, right in the middle of that song. Oh, yeah. I think you wondered what happened to me. <laughs> you said, what happened Life to me? Life is like a mountain railway. Yeah. That's the one. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, Life's Railway to Heaven is the title of the old okay. name for it. You know. and, uh, but it starts, life is like a mountain railroad, uh -huh. with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful, mm -hmm. from the cradle to, to the, the grave. Yep. Watch the curve, and the fuel and tunnel, do, 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 never falter, never, never fail. fail. Keep your the hand eye upon the throttle, the and your eye upon the rail. The rail. That's it. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. In the chorus. Uh, Ain't nothing wrong with his memory. <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> we used to face together, you know, and everything, because it was family. It's still family. Yeah, I love every one of them. I don't care. How about I, I Camford? Ever... He used to sing that Elbow Run. Yeah. Elbow Room? What was, was that the name of it? What was it? Yeah, Elbow Run. Sing that for. When we get to Elbow? heaven, we're going to have 50 miles. There's another one you got to learn. 50, <laughs> 50 miles of Elbow Road on either side of the Never heard of it. How about that? When the gates swing wide on the other side, just beyond the Sunset Sea, there'll be room to spire as we enter there. We're having you on tape, so Room for you yeah. and room for me. Well, wow. the gates are wide on, on the other side. Where the flowers ever bloom, on the right hand and on the left hand, 50 miles, the elbow room. You never heard that? Sometimes no. I'm cramped and crowded here, and I long for elbow room. I want to reach some attitude where fair flowers bloom. This will be mine when I shall pass into that city fair. With 50 miles of elbow room on either side, this fair. When the gates swing right on the other side, just beyond the sunset sea, there'll be room to fire as we enter there, room for you and room for me. For the gates are wide on the other side, and where the flowers ever bloom, on the right hand and, and on the left hand, 50 miles of elbow room. Wow. I, sing, do it show the tune, how, the, how it goes. He said, I'm going to walk, you see how close I can get to him. Walk right up there, real sneak. He sneaked right up there, real slow, you know. And he grabbed and got a hold of something. He said, Man, so the hat took off running. Right, he ran right behind him. But he went on one side of the tree, and the hat went on the other. And whatever it was, he tore off. So he got, finally got home. And we in there and threw it on across the table. It was uh, the tail off or something. <laughs> Man, I pulled that half tail off. 
the next morning, uh, his neighbor came come over and they get talking and everything. He said, I went out there this morning and that new calf there, uh, something happened to his tail. <laughs> he got no tail on that calf. And uh, uh, after John got to thinking, said, well, come on in here, man. They go on in there like that. He said, you ain't that can be it. <laughs> and, uh, and the old fella said, you sure does look like it. <laughs> you know, and to come point out, it was a fella's calf. And he pulled it and tail off by the roots. <laughs> when he went around that point, you really, know. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Cattail John the rest of his life. Cattail John. Calf. Calf tail. Calf tail John. Calf tail John. He said uh, 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 he had the most fun one day uh, when he come over to visit Grandma over here. Uh, he always had his cane, you know, and he was there spinning his cane while he was talking to him. I remember him, you know. Uh -huh. and he weren't he weren't as big as I am. A little fella, looking like Jeff. Jeff is a most, oh, wow. Jeff is shaped just like him. And Aunt Sue was about six foot two. Wow. There she was, and there's Uncle John. <laughs> and we've got a picture. Yeah, we do. In the, in the 30s, wasn't it? I don't remember. Well, we've got a picture of them two standing there together. There's, there's that great Aunt Sue. Is that right? Yes, it is. She's a big woman, uh, tall, you know. Yeah, Sue was, you know. Uh, what was Sue's maiden name? She a star? <laughs> uh, you got me. You got me. They, uh, they grow big. You got me there, Connie. <laughs> you sure have. Now, uh, Grandma and mother came from old Davis family oh. in Marshburg. Uh -huh. See, uh, her name was, they called her Miss Abby. Her name was Abigail Davis. That's my great grandma. And Abigail she came Davis. from the old Davis family, you know. Uh -huh. Oh, there's two or three of them. And, uh, I did know some names. But uh, uh, David over here, his wife is Dottie, was Dottie Davis. And she said uh, she came from, uh, from Marshallburg. I said, well, well, Donnie, uh, you and I could be cousins. And she looked at me and said, huh, I doubt it. And ever since then, she she hasn't wanted to even talk about it. <laughs> she, she, she don't want to be kind to me, you know. Well, her loss. They're rich people. <laughs> well, maybe you don't want to be kind to them. <laughs> That's the way that is. Yeah. Abigail Davis. Uh, well, listen, I, I I have worn you out. And, and, no, uh, you haven't, honey. No, no way you are. Yeah, me. I haven't worn it. But uh, I thank you. I'll, I'm going to call you again. And, and, like uh, we said before. I appreciate you. You're just like family to me. Now, the Mason family, the old original Mason family and the Rose family have been the best of friends as far back as I can remember and, and granddad. Yeah. Now, I uh, see great, 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 great grand, no, great, great, great granddad moved from uh, Pamlico County to Hyde County in 1710. Wow. In 1712, the original, old original Mason family moved in the same area, and that's what made up the little village of, of what we call now. Uh, Lucan's? No. Swan Quarter. Swan Quarter. Swan Quarter, and this is Hunter Quarter. Mm -hmm. That ain't Hunter Quarter, and that, that was Swan Quarter. And, uh, but the name, they took on the name of Swan Quarter a number of years later after right. they had settled there. And when they first uh, settled there, they called that bay just the western Rose of the bay. village, Rose Bay. Right. And your, Still called. your great, great, great granddaddy, uh, whoever, uh, said, if you're going to call that Rose Bay, we're going to call this Mason Town. <laughs> and, and, uh, it was roughly called Mason Town uh -huh. at the time until it took on the name of Swan Corner. How about that? And How about I've that? been there a number of times. Uh, 
more times in a boat than I will in a, on the highway, you know. Now, did I tell you? On the highway, uh, you can leave uh, a little Washington and, and drive nearly by straight now. Yeah, yeah. And, or you can go around and go up, through, up the canal and go to the, the village. Oh, yeah. Now, to the right, after you get to the end of the canal, right to the end of it, you can look over there like northeast, and that there's still a stand of pine there by the old homestead, Rose Homestead. Oh, wow. And uh, Terrible and Rose, uh, great uncle Furnace, and the new one, his son, said that he'd been over two or three times to the old homestead, and he, there's still some of the logs laying around. Oh, wow. From the log cabin. Wow. Still right down. Well, you talking about John? Derwood. How about the John Rose, his house that was over there? Oh, that's over here sleeping. And the girl and her husband that bought the place, Jane? What was her name? Powell. Powell. Joanne Powell. Joanne. Joanne. Yeah, yeah, Joanne. Yeah, they bought Powell and Powell. That oh, they that's bought their house. house. They bought the whole house, but it was in so bad shape. They, oh. I think they had it torn down. Or she, I remember her. She, didn't she live in it for a little bit? Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. Uh, she's, they found a snake in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Ellen <laughs> said uh, they had to keep buckets around here in honor. Yeah, drip, you yeah. Know, uh, it, it but you know they nice speak guy. of it so fondly. I mean, it was fun for them. Yeah. Now who? This well, is the, I didn't uh, find the picture. I had it just the other day, but this is his grandmother, grandfather oh, George. He's that. the one that he was telling you about. Uh huh. Uh, I had taken both of her. That's his grandmother. Look how short she was. Yes, <laughs> he was about six feet tall. Yeah, and that's her there. So she was, Tiny woman. She'd been through a lot of hardships, you know. And uh, but she just sat and talk to you and get laughing in her belly. Do you <laughs> see that right there? Can you see that? I don't know what it's, it's a boat. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. little sails on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He made that. Little uh, skiff like oh. this for Granny. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Years ago. I had that enlarged. I have it somewhere in there. Let me get another. You can't see it very one. clear in there. That but one. but once you point it out, I can see it. Sure. I uh, grand I see. Now this is later on, you know. Uh, now was uh, this this is the gentleman that was the um, Justice, Justice of the Peace? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Jordan him Rose. What a fine looking yeah. gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> his grandpa. He was still living when we got married. Right. Wow. He's named after. Uh, Rosary in 1986. Yeah, see, he was named after his dad, George the first. Of the yeah, the, the one that's buried to Atlantic is his father. I see. And oh, his wow. daddy, mom and dad, Mary Elizabeth Hill. Mary And And, uh, and George, George. George the first. You know. I wish I could find that picture of John and his wife. Yeah. Well, next time I'm to Atlantic, I'll go. I'll go tromping brother. through the cemetery, and I'll look and see. If I can find them all, yeah. I'll take you down there and show you. Well, so you won't have to tromp around. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you, I like it. Well, uh, Connie, like I told you about the Mason family, uh, he spoke of them uh, many a time. He spoke good about them, and he called out his own name, and there's hundred thousand. There's a hundred thousand basins in this part of the country. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, uh, the, uh, roses, yeah. I think the roses. Did I tell you the story about Joe Rose, the rose that, that went, moved to Moorhead? Well, from... now, Joe was Tommy Gray's uncle. Right. That was Thomas's brother. Right. Joe was only oh, Joe. Now there's Joe Rose, the first, second, and third. The well, third, he, he was with well, with the police force. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and Moorhead, Moorhead. Well, uh, <coughs> he's the one that, the, the one that uh, went whaling, the yeah. Joe Rose that went uh -huh. whaling, yeah. also played the accordion. Oh, he can play an uh, accordion, a mandolin, piano. I, he's the most musical fellow that's ever been. And, and his whole generation, the whole family, can play something or sing real well. Right, right. They're beautiful. Right. Well, that's, well, they should be. That's where you got it. Well, <laughs> right. No, no, no. We're no kin. Are you kin to that? To, to those roses? No, they're Spanish roses, and we're we're uh, uh, English roses. Scottish and English Scottish. roses. Oh my gosh. He's related to Tommy Gray's mother. 
Ah, Tommy, Tommy, Scott, mother, the Tommy's mother, their mother, uh, Sue, was great uncle Charlie, my grandma's brother's daughter, was Tommy Gray's mother. Okay. So that's the way we're kin there on his mom's side. I got you. His Sue. And uh, great uncle Charlie, he was the sweetest little old man. He was about that tall. <laughs> and, and he had a beard and mustache. And blind as a bat, <laughs> and and, uh, and Mervin, Mervin built him a little seat. There was a little tree in the front of Miss Sue's yard, you know, and he built him a little seat in our special for Uncle Charlie. And he'd go there and he sat there with him. He had a cane, walking cane, you know. He was playing with that cane all the time. And I go, I say, Hey, Uncle Charlie. He said, Hey, my boy. I said, I wish one of you. <laughs> and I tell him, I said, I'm Annie's grandson. He said, Annie, how's Annie doing? And I said, she's doing okay, you know, like that. We're sitting there and talk, and he's never seen me yet. Because <laughs> he, he couldn't see you. He's blind in the back. Um, couldn't see us. Cataracts, I reckon. Yeah, most likely, you know, I, I guess that's what it was, because his eyes were blurred, you know. And, yeah. And, uh. Kind of milked over. But he, he'd sit there, and if he got talking about some little family, his tears would come down, you know, his real... Uh, Sentimental. He was a Christian fellow or whatever. And he would get Tom to come out there, and Tom would stand there. He said, sing about the wine, and about the lifeboat. Tom. Oh, nice. And Tom would stand there and beat her and sing. Uh, one of them old songs he loved. Throw out the lifeline or something like that? Well, that one, uh, along with uh, uh, Make Room in the Lifeboat for Me. I don't know that one. I'm going to have to look that one up. Well, that's... Uh, they always, they always want me to do something. That's 300 that years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I hear somebody sing it, that's, I can learn it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, listen, I'm going to officially uh, end the tape because this is a... Do you remember the night we were down there? And <laughs> we had... That's a, right. We had some visitors and guest musicians. Yeah, yeah. And, and you and you, you introduced the last railway to heaven that oh, yeah. song. Yeah. And I started I started leading off with uh -huh. it. And it was just like somebody had turned me off or grabbed my guitar. She cut off just like that, right in the middle of that song. Oh, yeah. I think you wondered what happened to me. <laughs> you said what happened Life to me. Life is like a mountain railway. Yeah. yeah that's the one. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, Life's Railway to Heaven is the title. Uh, they were okay. named for it. You know. and, uh, but it starts, Life is like a mountain railroad. Uh -huh. With an engineer that's brave, we must make the run successful. Mm -hmm. From the cradle to, to the, the grave. Yep. Watch the curve, the fuel, the tunnel. Do -do 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 -do. Never falter, never, never fail. fail. Keep your I hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. rail. That's it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. In the chorus. Uh, Ain't nothing wrong with his memory. <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> we used to face together, you know, and have a thing because it was family. It's still family. Yeah, I love every one of them. I don't care. How about I, I don't, he used to sing that elbow run. Yeah. Oh. Elbow room? What was, was that the name of it? What was it? Yeah, elbow room. Sing that for. Have you when ever we heard get to elbow? heaven, we're going to have 50 miles. There's another one you got to learn. 50, elbow. 50 miles of elbow room on either side of the spire. Never heard of it. How about that? When the gates swing wide on the other side, just beyond the sunset sea, there'll be room to spire as we enter there. We have any more tapes. Room for you yeah. and room for me. Well, wow. the gates are wide on, on the other side. Where the flowers ever bloom, on the right hand and on the left hand, 50 miles, the elbow room. You've never heard that? Sometimes no. I'm cramped and crowded here, and I long for elbow room. I want to reach some attitude where fire flowers bloom. This will be mine when I shall pass into that city fire. With 50 miles of elbow room on either side, just fire. When the gates swing right on the other side, just beyond the sunset sea, that we room to fire as we enter there, room for you and room for me. Where the gates are wide on the other side, and where the flowers ever bloom, on the right hand and, 
and on the left hand, 50 miles of elbow room. Wow. Like, it's like, it shows a tang, how, how it goes. 